Yo, so I want to talk about something that's really important to me, songwriting. And I also want to give you a little bit of tough love because you need it. <laughs> So for me in the past, I spent a ton of time writing songs that never got released and I really hate that I did that. I would overthink the songs, I would rewrite them a million times, I would overthink the production and the lyrics and always think that the melodies could be better. But really what I was doing is I was taking a great moment in my life and a great feeling in my life, even if it was about a morbid thing like a death or a breakup or whatever or trauma or anything. And I was taking those great moments and those great songs and I was taking them and eating them and swallowing them and pooping them out in the toilet and then flushing. When what I should have been doing is finishing them and uploading. Them. So let's start from the top. You need to feel inspired. I don't really believe in writer's block. I think that you can feel like you're not in the mood to write a song or feel like you're uninspired to write a song that's going to be the next huge thing. But I do think you can sit down, clock in, and write a song and really train that songwriting muscle so that even when you're writing these 7 out of 10 songs in the moment, there's still something in there that you can draw inspiration from and finish a complete song with any of those ideas or maybe that song will turn into a great song. And those days are just going to happen. You're not going to feel inspired all the time. But when you do feel inspired by some new album or for me when I hear a genre that's really being pushed or exaggerated or some sort of lyrics that really make me feel like this person is being so personal that I can be personal in my songs and release them, you need to take hold of that inspiration and run with it, sprint with it, and finish a demoed idea as quickly as you can. But like I said, if you're not feeling inspired, then you need to use that moment to really push your boundaries and try something that you haven't really done before because maybe that will inspire you to finish a completely different song and the best song you've ever written. Like for me, I really like aggressive and overproduced sort of like pop punk rock type of music. But today maybe I feel like my riffs aren't really clicking with the idea and the feeling I had in my head. So maybe I'll try to write it as like an acoustic indie song and then sort of sprinkle in my own flavor. But maybe that'll be my new cool thing. And even just working on something new, it's kind of a challenge that you want to like take on and really finish that track. So the next thing is when you're writing a song, you're not writing an album. You're writing one singular song that has certain elements and a certain feeling. So you need to really draw the box of what that is. So if today I decided I'm going to write a song about my cat and how she changed my life and how that makes me feel so I'm gonna commit to that lyrical content and stick to that so that I don't drift too far thinking about the next songs or the whole album or my whole vibe of lyrical content for other songs and then also I'm gonna pick the elements that are involved so I'm gonna say this songs about my cat it's gonna be an indie rock song and it's gonna have drums guitar keys vocals bass and that's it so I'm committed to my overall feeling of the song and it's a little bit blurry right now because I haven't written it but there's at least an image there to work towards that I can flesh out and sort of build out that final track so to bring the song a little bit more in focus, we're going to think about the verses. Those are going to be stories about how I got my cat and how my life changed since I got my cat. And then the chorus is going to be the overall feeling of how this cat changed my life and I love her so much and blah, blah, blah. And then the bridge is going to be about if somebody tried to hurt my cat, then I would hire somebody to kill them and torture them. Or a less intense one is if my cat ran away, I'd be very sad. So now you have a little bit more detail to that picture you're trying to create. And then also maybe I think instrumentally, we're going to open up with a nice lighthearted sort of a acoustic guitar and it's going to slam into a verse where I'm just spitting lyrics on top of a drum beat with just bass and then it's going to open up into this big chorus because it's a big feeling. I love my cat. And then when it goes to the bridge, if it's that aggressive thing where I want to kill somebody, then it's going to be faster and it's going to be a little bit heavier. If it's going to be the sad thing, then maybe it's broken down just to piano. That way I have a little bit more of a skeleton and I can keep adding to this and keep the momentum going. So once you have all those details in place, I would say start writing, start demoing. Write your lyrics, write your progression, write your drums, and then they don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be too hard on yourself. Just get them in the computer. Focus mostly on your lyrical content and your melodies. Those are going to be the biggest things that carry you forward with committing to this track and actually re-recording all those parts and actually producing the track to be finished. But in my eyes, once the guitars are slopped in, the drums are slopped in, the lyrics are in, and the melodies are in, then the song is 90% there. That's how you were feeling. That has the right emotion because it's the first time you ever wrote it. It needs to be produced, but it's 90% there. And I think that is a great snapshot of a song. Now, here's the really tricky part. You need to come to terms with that song is how you felt in that moment and you're never going to get that moment back. Tomorrow you might have a different perspective on that song and you might have better taste or different taste, but that doesn't mean that that song is going to be any worse for any listener. You might feel a little bit different about it now, but once that song's up and people are listening to it, a lot of people are probably going to enjoy it. Somebody might be feeling that same way that you felt about your cat in that moment and really like your style and gravitate towards your personality and the way that you write lyrics and you've gained yourself a new fan and more importantly, your art is being appreciated and it wasn't flushed down the toilet and that person would have never heard the song. So my biggest piece of advice is work quickly. When you have that feeling, finish the song, trust yourself, trust your art. This is 100% you and you need to commit to the song and finish it and release it. At least when you're writing and actually getting the first draft of the song, you don't need to over listen. You don't need to 
worry about the mix. You don't need to worry about the vibe. Sometimes you don't even have to worry about the exact specifics that the song is about. As long as you have a path and you have the idea and the picture of the song, then you can get a demo 90% of the way there. And then when you go to the recording process, that's when you hyper focus on perfect takes and, and perfect vocal feeling and delivery and then worry about the mix and who's going to mix it and master it and whatever. But if you could change your perspective on this is my song, that's how I felt in this moment. I really love this song and I'm going to finish it and put it out. Then I can guarantee when the song is done, it's going to resonate with somebody. Better that you put it up for somebody to feel the same thing that you're feeling and resonate with and appreciate your art than just flushing it down the toilet. Now, of course, there's different ways to approach this. Maybe you're the type of artist that just works on an album all year and you do 40 demos and you pick the 10 best ones and you release this perfect album. That's also a great way to do it, but you're at least committing to the fact that you're releasing an album. And everyone's different, but from my perspective in this world in 2023, I think that singles are the way to go, especially if you're a smaller new artist or even a mid-level artist. I think that it makes the most sense to show what you can do and tell your story so that people can latch on to it and continue to grow with you. This world is just constant content and you don't want your one song a year to be flushed away by a thousand other really good songs. I'm not saying that you should fart out a song that's garbage, but I am saying once you commit to the idea, you need to finish it to the best of your ability in that time and upload it. You're always going to keep growing. You're always going to keep getting better. And if you stay on that path thinking that, oh, that song's not good enough now, you're never going to release anything. So I'll leave you with this. Think about an artist that inspires you or one of your favorite bands. Would you rather them write 12 songs and only release one of those for you to hear or hear every single song and make that decision for yourself every month for an entire year? Personally, I would love that, especially if they were documenting the whole process and showing the behind the scenes of how they created every single song. I think posting more of yourself for everybody to see is a good thing and going to connect to more people. Now, of course, when I'm in the studio and I'm crying at the mic because I'm really trying to get the right emotion out of that take and really living in the moment of whatever that song is about, I don't want to be filming that because it's super personal and it's going to take away from the feeling and the actual honest take of my performance. But when I'm demoing and writing, hell yeah, you're invited. Everybody's invited. I want everybody to see the process that I'm going through as I'm writing these songs. So I guess that's going to be it for me about rambling about songwriting. I'll catch you guys at Spotify headquarters next week. We're going to egg the building and find the CEO and tickle him. Not actually. All right, see ya.